Okay, let's get started. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Baltimore Municipal and Zoning Appeals Board hearings for February 26, 2019. A uh, few preliminary items. Uh, we would ask that you turn off all cell phones or other devices that make any sort of noise. Uh, they are not only disruptive to the proceedings here, but they interfere with the recordation of the proceedings. So we do ask you to turn those off. Um, we are generally going to call the cases as they appear on the docket. When we call your case, uh, the appellant will line up to my left. Anybody in opposition will line up to my right. Uh, we will hear from the appellant first. The opposition will then have the opportunity to state why they are opposed to the particular appeal, and then we will hear uh, from the appellant again, who will have a chance to address the concerns raised by the opposition, if any, and that will end the proceeding. We will not have a lot of back and forth uh, taking us into the late hours of the evening. Um, we will vote on the appeals that are heard today. Uh, we do that at the end of the docket. You are certainly welcome to stay and listen if you would like. Uh, if not, you may call the office tomorrow and get our decision. The phone number for the office is 410-396-4301. And I'll read that one more time, 410-396-4301. Um, please do not build in Baltimore without the proper permits, and our written decision will be issued in approximately two to three weeks. We have uh, a few cases here today uh, that have opposition. Um, and we have found that sometimes if the people who are in opposition have the chance to talk to the appellant, sometimes things can get worked out. I do caution that we will make the decision on the case based upon the applicable law, but we do like for people to talk, at least have the opportunity to talk, to resolve any issues that they may have. I'm going to call the cases for which opposition has signed in, and you don't have to come up, just stand up and we'll see if it's makes sense for you guys to have a conversation. So the first case for which opposition is signed in is 2018-452-1743 North Washington Street. Are they outside? Well, it appears they are outside talking, which is a good thing. Um, the next case for which we have opposition is 2019-38-200 North Monroe Street. Are you the opposition? Yes. Okay. Are you the appellant? Ma'am? Your opposition. Who's the appellant? The appellant is Mr. Singh. He's not here? All right, we will call the case in turn. And if he's not here, it'll be um, dismissed. Uh, next case, which opposition signed in is 2019-403226 Bel Air Road. Okay, have you guys had the opportunity to talk? No, we have not, but if you know, I represent our dollars and our dollar bills, according to the provisions of Ben I, in beckoning Okay. Thank you very much. Um, next, we're going to call cases uh, which are on our consent docket. But um, before we do that, I, I do want to mention that one of our members, Jay Bonner, uh, is becoming an alternate member of the BMZA. Uh, she'll be coming in as needed. Uh, I want to thank her for her years of great service, and I wish her well. And you'll have plenty of free Tuesday <laughs> afternoons. <laughs> okay, we're going to go into our consent docket. Uh, these are cases for which the Zoning Board has reviewed the appeal and feel we have sufficient information to approve your appeal. I'm going to call those cases. As I call those cases, please line up to my left. First case on the consent docket is 2018-234-900 North Broadway. And I'm not even going to try the last name. <laughs> <laughs> Calling again, 900 North Broadway. 
Next case is 2019-7, 4006 to 4016 Park Heights Avenue. Donald Hicks. Here. Come on up. <coughs> Next case is 2019-24, 147 South Linwood Avenue. Tom McClary. Next, we have 2019-26, 1155 North Cary Street. Next is 2019-31, 4017 to 4119 Eastern Avenue, Adam Carballo. Next is 2019-32, 301 to 303 South Conkling Street, Adam Carballo. 2019-34, 1017 East Baltimore Street, Caroline Hecker. And that is it for our consent docket. Okay, let's get everyone sworn in who's going to provide testimony. <coughs> the testimony of the chair of the committee in this hearing will be the truth so I'll choose nothing but the truth. I do. That's right. All right. I'll call it again. 900 North Broadway. Anyone here? Next case, 2019-7, 4006 through 4016 Park Heights Avenue, Donald Hicks. Here. One up. State your name for the record, please. My name is uh, Donald E. Hicks. Okay, Mr. Hicks, we have this to consolidate lots, raise buildings to install accessory parking lot for existing church. Is that correct? Uh, that's primarily it, but there's two uh, appeals. Uh, we're asking for two variances. Well, is the description of what you want to do accurate? That is. That, okay, let's hold, uh, hold there. There was, a, there was an attachment to that. It was the only request. And I'm going to look at Mr. Baumgartner here. Pardon me? Uh, this appeal was, um, was under one appeal, correct? Yes. So 2019-7? Right. And that appeal was for? I can read it if you like. So the, um, uh, the appeal and the staff report um, uh, matches um, your attachment to this document? Yes. Which requests um, a front yard variance and then um, a parking variance as well. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Uh, that is. Okay. Okay, good. Do we have any staff reports? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Martin French for the Baltimore City Planning Department. Department reviewed this application, noted that this property is in the Park Heights Urban Renewal Plan area. The department is recommending approval of the application subject to the condition that all improvements are completed in accordance with site and landscaping plans approved by the Planning Department and with the requirements of the Park Heights Urban Renewal Plan. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Hicks, are those conditions acceptable to you? Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Great. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add? No, just uh, hopeful for a favorable consideration. Oh, you're in, you're in the right line here. The Zoning Board, having reviewed your appeal, we have sufficient information to approve your appeal. We also have another letter that was issued by the council. Do you have it? We do. All right. All right. Thank you very much. All right, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, 2019-24, uh, 147 South Linwood Avenue. Thank you. To you state your name, please. Leah Ferguson. Okay. Ms. Ferguson, we have this to construct third floor rear deck and rooftop deck with pergola. Is that correct? Yes. And do we have any staff reports? Planning Department has no comment on this application. Thank you. I have nothing. Great. Thank you. Anything you'd like to add? No. Great. Zoning Board having reviewed your appeal, we have sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank, Thank you. 2019-26, 1155 North Cary Street. Wade Adams. Okay. Next is 2019-31, 4017 to 4019 Eastern Avenue. Mr. Cabal, would you state your name for the record, please? 
Adam Carballo. And we have this to construct new third floor and use premises as retail commercial space and four dwelling units on second and third floor. Is that correct? That is correct. Great. Staff reports? Yes, thank you. Planning Department reviewed this application, noted that this property is located within the Highland Town business area, urban renewal plan area. Therefore, recommends that approval of the application be subject to the condition that all exterior modifications to the existing structure are completed in accordance with designs and plans approved by the Department of Planning. Great. Thank you. And Mr. Cavallo, are those conditions acceptable to you? Yes, sir. Great. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, sir. Great. Zoning so Board, having reviewed your appeal, we have sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you. And Thank stay you. right there. 2019-33-129 uh, South, <coughs> I'm sorry, 2019-32-301-303 to 303 South Conkling Street. Uh, Mr. Chairman, hi. Uh, my name is Sean Harvey. I represent the owner of the uh, building. Okay. And uh, actually, I, I uh, entered my written appearance last week. It apparently didn't... Uh, it wasn't stricken from the uh, your roster there. Okay. Mr. Carballo is going to recuse himself from this matter. Okay. And we have this to use first floor as office. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Do we have any staff reports? Planning Department has reviewed this application and recommends approval. Thank right. you. Anything you'd like to add? Nothing further. Right. Is there any board having reviewed your appeal? We have sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, 12, 9, 2019 dash 34 1017 East Baltimore Street. Good afternoon, Caroline Hecker Rosenberg Martin on behalf of the applicant, and I'm joined by Steve Goodman of Hel Helping Up Mission. Great, thank you. And Ms. Hecker, we have this to add health care clinic to existing homeless shelter. Is that yes, correct? That's correct? Do we have staff reports? Yes, Planning Department reviewed this application, noted that this property is located within the Jonestown Historic District. The department therefore recommends approval of the application be subject to the condition that all exterior changes, including additions, demolitions, and alterations, are completed in accordance with an authorization to proceed issued by the Commission for Historical and Architectural Preservation. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Hecker, if we're to approve, are those conditions acceptable to you? They are. We're not actually proposing any exterior modifications. The entire health care clinic will be located within the existing structure. Right. The zoning board having reviewed your appeal, we have sufficient information to approve your appeal, and we will take your submission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. End of consent. All right. Next case is 2018-452, uh, 1743 North Washington Street. Joe Wallman. Are they outside? Do you know? Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll hold that case and come back to it. 2018-459, 4609 Pennington Avenue, Tulia Flores. How are you? Would you, would you state your name for the record, please? Excuse me? Would you state your name for the record? Yeah, Tulio Flores. And let me get you sworn in. Do you swear or raise your right hand? Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, mm -hmm. Mr. Flores, we have this to use first floor as grocery store. Is that correct? Yes. And do we have any staff reports? Yes, Planning Department reviewed this application, noted that this property, although it is a mid-block property, was actually built as a single-family attached dwelling, but in 1986 was authorized for use as a confectionery. The department considers, therefore, this property could qualify for consideration for neighborhood <coughs> commercial establishment. Okay. In addition, this is located in the Brooklyn and Curtis Bay Business Area Urban Renewal Plan area. And therefore, the department recommends that approval of the application be subject to the condition that all exterior alterations or additions to the existing structure are completed in accordance with the Brooklyn and Curtis Bay Business Area Urban Renewal Plan as approved by the planning department. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Flores, if we were to approve your appeal, are those conditions acceptable to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell us what you want to do in this property. Uh, grocery store. Um, tell me a little more about that. And how oh, many hours okay. you want to be open? What are you going to sell? Uh, I tried to give you a different option to the community. I saw now uh, most Latin people around to the area, so that's why I tried to open a Latin or Spanish grocery store. I tried to sell uh, different things. Okay. Any questions from the board? No. Thank you very much. That's it. 
And the, uh, the next step? Uh, the next step is, as I said earlier, at the end of the day, we will vote on, on your appeal. Mm -hmm. And then you can either stay and listen or you can call the office tomorrow morning and get our decision. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Twenty eighteen dash eighteen fifteen oh nine Eastern Avenue. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'll get you sworn in in a second. I'll raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Oh, would you state your name for the record, please? Tanya Watson. Mr. Wat Ms. Ms. Watson, uh, we have this to use first floor as health clerk clinic. Is that correct? Correct. Great. And do we have any staff reports? Yes, thank you. Planning Department reviewed this application, noted that this property is located within the Fells Point Historic District. Because of that, it is, of course, subject to review of any exterior alterations by the Commission for Historic and Architectural Preservation. The Department of Planning therefore recommends that approval of the application be subject to the condition that all exterior changes, including additions, demolitions, and alterations, are completed in accordance with an authorization to proceed issued by the Commission for Historical and Architectural Preservation. Thank you. Any other staff reports? Um, Ms. Watson, if we were to approve this, are those conditions acceptable to you? Yes, they are. Okay. So tell us a little bit about the health clinic, uh, what you want to do, what, do you, what services you're going to offer. So it's actually an infusion spa. So um, we would offer uh, services such as uh, IV hydration services, um, IV vitamin infusions, and B12 shots. So it would be a second location for us. We already have one in Annapolis. So we're, I'm here on behalf of my business partner, mm -hmm. Juana Fontenot. So um, she owns the property, which is currently residential, and we just want to use the bottom floor for these services. Okay. And what would be the hours of operation? Um, probably... Currently, our Annapolis location, we're open seven days a week. Um, during the week, 10 to 3, 11 to 3, and Saturdays and Sundays around 10 to 4. So it would be somewhere around there. We don't know for sure at this point, but that's what we're doing now. Okay. And what volume of people do you anticipate um, coming in and out of the store at the various hour hours? So these are – the services aren't – the cheapest. Um, so we have um, a very high-end spa in Annapolis, so we would be reproducing <coughs> that at this location as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a very modern high-end spa. Um, so we have a very, we have high-end clientele. But what number do you anticipate um, coming in and out of the, we're just trying to get a feel for what this operation is going to do to the neighborhood. Oh, okay. Um, so I would say like how many people on average yeah. per day? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Probably, and we would just be starting, but it probably wouldn't be more than um, six or seven a day. Okay. Okay. Any questions from the board? No. Great. Thank you very much. 2019-19-6435 Pulaski Highway. Okay, anyone that's going to provide testimony, let's get you sworn in. I'll raise your right hand, please. Uh, you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Uh, yes. All right, thank you. Good. Counsel? Good afternoon. For the record, Justin Williams from the law firm Rosenberg Martin Greenberg. I'm joined by client Raj Patel and colleague Caroline Hecker. And we have this to amend. Well, actually, to amend. Well, let me read what we pr uh, previously <laughs> approved: to amend renovation of guest uh, service station into a restaurant with drive-through window, to include signs. And we were here today only on the sign portion of that. Is that I correct? believe the board approved the drive-through portion last week, right, two correct. weeks ago. Great. The staff reports. Yes, uh, planning department uh, did a very quick review of the sign package that was provided to us. And there appear to be um, some very specific design issues with a couple of the signs that could be remedied uh, in, in the opinion of the department by the applicant. 
with a little uh, care and engineering consideration because one of the issues in front of uh, the board and, and this particular applicant is that there is a limit on the board's discretion to provide variances and one of those limits has to do with the number of signs that are allowed. The code currently as written does not give the board discretion to vary the number of certain types of signs on the property. The request appeared to be for uh, and specifically when it came to the freestanding signs, two signs of the same type uh, when the code, uh, which of course has just gone into effect recently, so we're still getting used to it, uh, limits to one, the number of a specific kind of freestanding sign, such as the freestanding pylon sign or the freestanding pole sign. Uh, we spoke with the applicant concerning this just a short time ago and the applicant was willing to consider some redesigns if necessary so that there would be one of each type which the code would allow uh, and therefore not force the issue in, you know, in front of the board where the board might have to disapprove the, the request for those signs. In the same vein on the building itself there is a limit of one wall sign because this property is not a multi-story property, it's a single story property. And in that circumstance, there is also an allowance in the code for a, what's called a canopy sign. And the canopy sign uh, has a different method of being calculated in terms of allowable area, but that really isn't an issue here because the signs as proposed are well within the limits established in the sign code. So again, it's a matter of engineering that if the second proposed wall sign could be redesigned as a canopy sign, it would be something that would be approvable and the planning department is willing to work with the applicant on the details of this because we're all new to this sign code, quite frankly, uh, and we understand that. And of course, at the time that they probably prepared the drawings, they may not have had the opportunity to review the code in detail since it's just arrived <laughs> in effect. So that all said, uh, the department is basically recommending approval subject to some design changes, quite frankly, of what is being put before the board. Thank okay. you. Mr. Williams, would you tell us about these signs and tell us your take on sure. the comments so from the planning department? Sure. As a preliminary matter, I just have a half the press letters of support from Councilman Scott, Councilman representing the area. Um, I guess I'll get into um, the issue, our, our dispute with planning, that we think we do have authority under the zoning code, or the board has the authority in the, the code to grant the variances we're seeking. Um, as brief background, the applicant um, started the process to get the approvals to build a Dunkin' Donuts um, last year. And at the time, the sign code in effect at the time allowed this sign package we're proposing by right. Um, so there's an equitable argument that we should be able to proceed. And also, I'll show you provisions in the code that I, we believe can be read and should be read to give you authority to grant the variances for the signs proposed. Um, your reference, just give me the street view photo showing the area in question, you might remember from two weeks ago. Thank you. <coughs> the property is at the corner of Pulaski Highway and North Point Boulevard. It was the former Royal Farms gas station that vacated the property about four years ago and it's been vacant ever since. You'll see the the visibility is limited based on some of the trees in the vicinity and the existing signage along Pulaski Highway, which is pretty extensive. And <coughs> compared to the sign package we're proposing, which I have here for you, our, our latest version, the signs existing on Pulaski Highway, the North Point Road, are considerably bigger and um, definitely not complying with the current code. Just to briefly walk you through them, <coughs> just proposing a modest Duncan sign on the front of the store. Go ahead and tell us, planning seen these? Um, I think we, yeah, this is the. <coughs> no, it's fine. So a modest Duncan sign, modest signage, a DD sign over the drive through lane, a sign that says something fresh is always brewing, and uh, America runs on Duncan. Pretty small, not in keeping with the size of the store. Um, additionally, a 
on page F, there's a clearance sign, which it's not clear under the sign reg says drafted, if that even is, counts as a sign for the drive through clearance sign. Um, there's a menu board proposed, which is page G, which is basic size and in keeping with traditional drive through store. There's also directional signs proposed on page H, which are might say necessary to direct traffic through the um, property. And finally, we're proposing two, it's not really clear in the code how they're classifying them. I think they should be pole signs under the code, um, but they're two pole or pylon signs that would go on each road frontage, um, reading Dunkin' Donuts. Um, the applicant, as part of his deal with Dunkin' Donuts, is mandated to, I guess, install the sign package that's proposed. And um, for the reasons what I'm about to discuss, I think the board has the authority to grant the variances for them. Um, you see the sign package is very modest it looks and like keeping. It would really be hard to tell it's a Dunkin' Donuts. Without the signage, right. If you, only, if you only do one sign, or if you only do and no directional signs and no menu board, or only one wall sign, it would be difficult for motorists in any direction to determine what store they're going to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but if there were no signs available, you wouldn't know what store you're going to. Let me walk you through this. This is the most important piece of exhibit for your <coughs> review, the legal standards for your review. The plannings read is that section 5301B of the code. I have a copy here. Um, screenshotted or excerpted for you. You're challenging my eyes, Mr. Williams. <laughs> so, uh, well, the, the, I, I copied it in the bullet point, too. Basically, the reading is that um, Section 5301B states that the variance procedure below applies only to changes in bulk and yard regulations, changes in signage, parking, and loading requirements, and nothing else. <clears throat> um, I think well, this is it doesn't say you cannot grant other types of variances, and the board has routinely granted other types of variances besides those four, bulk and yard, signage, parking, and loading. Um, additionally, it doesn't say you cannot grant those variances, and I include an excerpt later below to challenge Mr. Bonaventure's eyes further, where it says the board may not grant any variances for a sign that has been the subject of a deviation or addition under the section. So that's the provision where the board and the code says you cannot do it unlike the uh, section that planning is relying upon to say that you cannot grant the sign variance. <coughs> um, additionally, the board has used its authority under the land use article and the city charter to grant variances outside of those four listed before, the bulk and yard, signage, parking and loading types of variances. Um, for example, and this is the bottom of page two going to page three, <coughs> there's been variances granted routinely from Title 14, which is the use standards. Um, I have examples there showing, um, for example, when you have accessory retail uses inside a multifamily dwelling, there is a limit on 5% of the ground, gross floor area can be used for that retail use. Variances have been granted in the past from that provision. There's provision section 14338 for telecommunications facilities, which says uh, verbatim a variance is required to grant a nonconformity, but that's not contemplated in the section 5301 that planning would say, says you cannot grant the sign variances that we need. Um, additionally, Title 15, fence and wall height uh, variances have been granted all the time from that provision, um, which is not contemplated in, in that initial section 5 301. <coughs> so if, if there's a copy on page four showing the table, which shows from Title 15 that fences are limited to a height of six feet but routinely the board grants variances in that provision despite there not being explicit authority in section 5-301 to do so. Similarly, without the explicit authority to grant the sign variance requested here, the board should make that accommodation here, um, especially because it'd be nonsensical to not grant the variances here. We're requesting very limited signage that's in keeping with the traditional drive through restaurant. <coughs> um, menu boards, for example, not contemplated in the new sign regulations. They were in the old code, so a menu board, which is a sign, might be a pylon sign or a pole sign, that'd be the one sign per lot if under planning's reading of the code, and that would be nonsensical to only allow one sign on the lot. Additionally, I've taken a copy of section 17-415C5, highlighted at the bottom. You'll see that it provides in the code section that the wall signage can be split into multiple signs on a lot. But the next page, you see the table that planning sites says you only have one sign per lot. So 
it's obviously nonsensical to say that have one provision that allow for multiple signs for wall signs, but then have a separate provision that says you only have one sign per lot, per lot and no variances can be granted. Um, finally, Councilman Scott, who was a co-sponsor of the sign regulation bill, supports our variance request today. So given the gray area and the Councilman's support of the variance requested and that they're in keeping and that uh, with the neighborhood in the Pulaski Highway corridor and very modest and that the uh, applicant had invested time and money up to this pro process, the board should interpret this gray area in favor of the applicant. Do you have the franchise agreement? Does it require them to do that? I'm not going to Yes. Sure. Uh, my name is Raj Patel and um, I'm the owner of the property as well as the person uh, developer and operator as well. And when we get the uh, conditional approval, it's based on the sign package. Will they work with you if, for instance, if you weren't to get approved today, is it a deal breaker for Dunkin' Donuts yeah, to authorize the franchise? Yeah, because our approval is contingent upon the sign package. And okay. I think at the time, we were working on this for like almost six, seven months now. And when we initially looked at it, we were within the code. And that's why we were granted the approval to develop the site. And I think the time we submit our application, I think that day or a couple of days here and there, the code changed. Got it. Because we went through all the zoning to make it commercial, to get the drive through approval, and we came to find out that the code changed, which would jeopardize our investment and our approval as well from brand. So that's why we're here to grant the approval. Mr. Williams um, or Ms. Hecker, um, in your experience, um, do you franchise agreements typically contain that provision that they are contingent upon um, something like a sign package? Yes, they, they typically do. Uh, Caroline Hecker, for the record. Um, typically, it, it would be, the signage would be something that's very important to the, um, the, the corporate entity, in this case, Dunkin', um, Dunkin' Donuts. They want to make sure that they have, um, that there, there are various locations throughout the country that have a uniform look to them, um, and that they have adequate signage to appropriately identify the location. And so they routinely require particular signage packages um, for each of their locations. Thank you. So there would be no Dunkin' Donuts in a, in a city that had a much stricter, much more strict sign requirements than we have? They would all be generally the same. Um, any new Dunkin' Donuts, I mean, there were certain older Dunkin' Donuts that were approved under um, previous iterations of Dunkin' Donuts and signage package, but any new Dunkin' Donuts that were become, being constructed would have the same sign. Like I said, if, if, a, if a city, a right. jurisdiction had a um, stricter sign code than we know there would be no Dunkin Donuts. Well, or Dunkin Donuts, you know, it, as Mr. Patel was saying, we started this process under the old oh, code okay. and we designed the signage package with Dunkin Donuts in terms of something that was approvable under the old signage code. The new signage regulations that we're operating under now became effective this last month and we had already gone through the approval process for the signage with Dunkin Donuts under the old code. Um, if we were in another jurisdiction that had different signage regulations, we would have worked with Dunkin' Donuts on the front end to establish a signage package that everyone was comfortable with and gone forward with that approval um, in, in that jurisdiction. So if you were dealing with a new sign package from the beginning, then Dunkin' Donuts wouldn't approve the... Uh, yes. Well, I mean, they w it would be case-by-case case basis. So, so we'll, if you we'll have no more Dunkin' Donuts in the city? I don't think it would. It would be case by case. Well, no, I mean, no, if, if Duncan, Do I think if we were starting from scratch, we would have worked out a signage package that was acceptable to both us and Duncan the Donuts brand. under the current code. But the signage package that we and Duncan Donuts agreed on was approvable under the old code, which has now <coughs> obviously been replaced by the new code. And to further Ms. Hecker's point, um, one of the variants, there's four variants requested in the handout I gave to you. Um, one is for the directional signage, which is very modest and is necessary to direct traffic through the site. Under the planning department's reading of the code, you cannot have directional signs and you can't, we can only have one sign out of the ground. Well, that's a it pole doesn't sign. say you can't have directional signs, you can't have duplicative signs. You can't have more than one sign right. on the entire lot. So you either have an identification sign or a directional sign to direct motorists around the, tra the lot safely. And so I think that would be a nonsensical reading. And if that were the interpretation the board were to take and the city were to take, companies would get, have pause to say, if we can't do any directional signs on our site to direct motorists for fast food restaurants or coffee shops or Dunkin' Donuts, that's something they should review. I think just to put a finer point on it, the only two signs that I think planning has takes an issue with, and Mr. French can correct me if I'm wrong, are the fact that we have two 
um, whether you want to call them pole signs or pylon signs, we have one on each frontage. And the two signs that we're proposing are identical, one on each side of the property. The code would allow us to have one pole sign and one pylon sign, but not two of either one variety. So it's it's sort of a, a almost a distinction without a difference. But there, you know, it, whether it's a pylon sign or a pole sign, we can have one of each, but not two of one. And then the other one is the DD sign that's on the side of the building. If we were to put that sign on a canopy, as opposed like mounted on the top of a canopy rather than on the wall of the building, it would be allowable. But if it's <coughs> mounted on the side of the building. It is not allowable because there's another wall sign on that building on that side already. Um, so the, uh, it's two very minor things that could be re-engineered, as Mr. French indicated, to make them comply with the technical language of the code. But they're also it, it's the distinction between what would be permissible versus what we're proposing is so minor that I'm, I'm not sure that it's really a, an important distinction. Mr. French, based upon uh, the information you received here today. Um, any change or any comments that, that you want to make on planning uh, position on this? Well, <clears throat> the fundamental problem, I guess, that the department sees is the way the code is written, um, and we note that this, uh, <clears throat> the version of the bill that emerged as the final ordinance actually added this requirement. Uh, it does not apply, meaning the variance procedure, to changes in the uses, the maximum quantity of signs that was added in council, location requirements of signs, and types of signs allowed within a zoning district. It's the position of the department that this determination has been made by the mayor and city council, and therefore, whether you know considered reasonable or not by a particular uh, business, is the way the code is at the present time. So we have proposed some changes, uh, you know, informally here. Uh, which we felt could allow the applicant to get to uh, freestanding signs of slightly different type and to signs on the building of different type and therefore meet the, you know, the minimal requirement of the particular franchise agreement. Um, but we feel that uh, to decide as a board that you actually have an authority to exercise a variance procedure when the code appears not to allow you that is beyond your uh, your ability to do. Thank you. Okay. Has right, just the applicant gone back to the franchisor to see if the nuances would be acceptable? Have you had an opportunity to do that at this we point? We have not okay. um, based on our current agreement. Okay. And we just found out last uh, week. Last week. Okay. That's awesome. And then the, the other nuance that can't be, I guess, bridged is the directional signage, which really is important for a drive through restaurant. You can re-engineer the pylon sign on one side and make it a pole sign and have one be a pylon sign, but the directional signage, for example, there's no workaround except for to allow a variance for the quantity of signs that I guess can be considered pole signs or directional or pylon signs from the code. And um, Mr. French's reading um, said that the, the, from the code, 5-301, the copy of what you gave to you says, the procedure does not apply to sign um, variances, um, but doesn't say you cannot grant a sign variance. And I showed you the other provision that where it explicitly says the board cannot grant a variance, but this is not one of those instances. Don't you want to postpone today without us making a decision to see if they're willing to be flexible with you about the sign? <laughs> I think that'd be a good idea. I don't think we have the ability to take any more time with the contract that we have. Okay. So okay. Okay. So in closing, given the councilman's support and the $1.4 million investment and the 15 jobs that would be created in the gray area and the councilman drafted and sponsored legislation to do the sign regulation supporting the variances to be granted here, I think the board should grant the approval. And also we're on a certain timeline, right? So if I have to go back, that'll take an extra half time and then the brand might just come back saying, hey, we can't develop the site because it's taking too long. Okay. So we went with the old code, and at that time was all within the code and it was approved. And we just came to find out that things have changed, which jeopardized our investment, you know? Okay. Any questions, other questions from the board? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a postponement to announce, and that is case 2018 452, 1743 North Washington Street. 
So anyone here who is in opposition to that case, if you have signed in, uh, we will um, we will be we will notify you when the case is being reheard. Mr. Wolman, I think we've just postponed your case. Thank, thank you, and I appreciate that. I just want to let you know that, uh, for the record, uh, Council President is here along with Councilman Stokes, who had to leave, and we're outside with the community trying to work all this That's out. That's good. We, we come like back that. to you next well, time with uh, with an agreement. Well, can I weigh in on the last case? Um, we want we're not on the record. Uh, yeah, we're not Mr. on the President, record, but I, I just no. want to weigh on that last case. When we did transform Baltimore, um, you know, is subject to mistakes. And we're trying to be business friendly. And you guys can make a decision based on what you think is right. We don't want to, you know, have businesses not wanting to come to Baltimore arguing over signs. Uh, we got a sign bill that we're just working through the council right now that's going to address some things. Now, they were under the old code, okay? So if you're working under, old, under the premise of the old code and then we change it and you're unaware of the change, because a lot of people are still not aware of the changes we made and transform Baltimore. So I, I just wanted to, off the record, let you know that, um, you know, things are, 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 are done in a way that we want to make sure that we are protecting the city interests as well as protect the interests of businesses. And to have a Dunkin' Donut go through this, in my opinion, is just crazy. <laughs> just, that's just my personal opinion. Thank you. I'm not working on that case. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so again, 2018-452, 1743 North Washington Street is postponed. Uh, next case, 2019-25, 210 South Chester Street, Eric Munchek. Wow. You're not Eric. We need Mr. Munchek. Okay, we're going to record this as a no-show. Thank you. Case. 2019-28, 410 South Durham Street, Lee Giroux. So let's get everyone who's going to provide testimony sworn in. I raise your right hands and swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing. Will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Okay. And would you state your name for the record? Yes, Lee Giroux. Ms. Giroux, we have this to construct three-story rear addition with rear decks. Is that correct? That's correct. And <coughs> do we have staff reports? The planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Do we have other staff reports? Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about what you want to do here. Okay. Hi. I lived in the house for 10 years and I want to, I'm renovating to do a nicer house. Your name, sir? My name is Roy Morgan and I'm the property owner. Okay. And I was well in construction and I passed zoning probably four years ago and I had a stroke, sir. And that knocked me off construction. Okay, so let's first talk about what, what you're constructing. What do you want to construct? I'm building a house. Three-story addition. With this is an addition, not a house. Correct. Three-story okay. addition with rear decks. Correct. Okay. And has this has construction started? Some of it has. I've already done some. I've already done some excavation, but I. But like I said, I got sick and it stopped. Did you have a permit for the work that you've done? I did. Okay. Do we have any reports, Mr. Baumgartner? So the the permit history reflects that permits looks like were issued at some point in time. Um, I'm seeing permits issued in 2011, which is approximately eight years ago. Um, and then there are violation notices issued, one in 2018 and one in 2013. Uh, the 2013 violation was for erecting a rear addition and deck without permits. And in 2018, in December 2018, uh, there was alteration without proper permits, including 
uh, work on underpinning that was done without permits. Um, so that's what we have in the file from the Department of Housing. There was no work being done in 2018 there. I merely showed the property to pump water out because it flooded. And I'd like to address the 2013 violation. Uh, there's never been a deck. Oh, I'm sorry, what? There's never been a deck on the back of the home. And I have, pic I have pictures so in my phone that I can prove that there's never been a deck. So we, just, we believe that it may have just been the wrong address that was I think they were calling, the on, calling in my neighbor's deck. Right, next door. It would be a very, very good idea to clear that up, the I Department did. of Housing. I did. I actually good. sent an email Great. to uh, Mr. Uthenreitner, and I was waiting for, a, um, for an answer back since last week. Um, as you're aware, Mr. Rue, um, work without a permit can come with a fine of $500 per day. Yes. So it's good to make sure that if a property is cited, it's the correct property and that your client's not on the hook for perhaps work correct. that was done on um, an adjacent structure. Right. My email included that to Mr. Arthur right now. Great. Okay. Okay. Mr. Rowe, as you know, there are standards uh, that a, a showing has to be made before a variance is granted. Can you sort of run through those standards for the variances that are requested here? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> yes. In keeping with the neighborhood, uh, going through the uh, checklist, basically we are not doing anything that would uh, cause a, a negative impact on the neighborhood. Uh, these are the si same kinds of additions that have been done on other homes similarly in his neighborhood. And we're not doing anything um, more than just building out for the sake of the uh, lot coverage to make it more of a liberal space for uh, Mr. Morgan. So at this point, um, there's no negative impact. There's no objection from the neighborhood or from the direct neighbors. And uh, there was a previous uh, appeal some years back. And it was approved, but because of uh, Mr. Morgan's uh, health issue, uh, everything came to a stop. And so that's primarily um, what we're doing. So just to upgrade and to enhance the neighborhood with what we're doing as far as the additions, um, there's nothing else as far as materials or anything else um, that we're concerned about. And everyone's been contacted. This is basically a renewal of what was approved before with the board. And the hardship or uniqueness of the property? It's, uh, there's none. There really is none other than the fact that we have um, in the plan that we show to you, um, you know, this is a very uh, small uh, area that we're doing and um, there's nothing as far as the practical difficulty. Uh, the uniqueness of the lot is basically a, s a pretty standard lot uh, down in this uh, particular block of Durham. Mr. Uh, what is the property width? I'm sorry? What is the width um, of the property? Ten foot three. Is the property, um, is it accessible from a rear alleyway? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, it looks like it's a mid-block lot off of Durham Street. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. All right. And it looks like the lot is um, to the rear of the property. There's a small section of, I guess, a property that's addressed off of Ann Street. That's that kind of cuts across and makes a kind of a weird... I don't know, like a T-shape almost, is that correct? I researched my property back and what happened was in the 1800s, a German family owned the entire lot from Ann Street all the way back and they divided amongst their children and they divided two lots on the Ann Street side and three lots on the Durham Street side and that's why they're there. That would and account for, th there's a peculiar um, configuration between Ann Street and Durham Street where one, two, three, four, five lots are kind of carved up and that would explain that is what happened. That carve up. It looks like the two adjacent lots to you, lot 65 and 66, are even smaller. I mean, they are. If, if I'm reading that correctly, that's a 10 foot by 40 foot lot. I'm 10 foot by 53 right now. I think 10 by 40 42 might be the smallest lot in the city of Baltimore that I've ever seen. So that's okay. that's pretty small. Thank you. Great. You're welcome. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to add? No, thank you very Any much. Any questions from the board? No. Great. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank Next you. case, 2019-29, 110 East Fort Avenue. Good afternoon. Hey, Testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. 
happen to help. Great. Would you state your name for the record, please? Christian Clifton. Mr. Clifton, we have this to construct third floor front addition and rooftop deck, including access from stair penthouse. Is that correct? Yes. Great. Do we have any staff reports? The planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Great. Tell us about this project. Um, the addition will be actually an extension of a uh, rear third story that's there now. So that would be, they have, the children have a shared bedroom, so they would, it would give them the opportunity to have their own bedroom and then the rooftop is, is just that. It's about, it takes up about half the space once you have the access and the eight foot setback that the city requires. Any questions? Nope. Great. Thank you very All much. Right. Thank you. 2019 30, 4000 Frankfurt Avenue. I'll just read it. Going again, 2019 30, 4000 Frankfurt Avenue, yeah. Janelle Williams. Ah, here you are. Let me get you sworn in. Ms. Williams, we have this to construct six foot high fence, is that correct? Yes. Any conditions, any comments? Yes. The planning department? Well, we have a letter from the Walterson Improvement Association. They wrote that uh, it had written and expressed the concern that it would obstruct the view from the street if people are trying to check for oncoming traffic. This is not a small fence, it's huge. Uh, they have a concern of the actual fencing itself. It's nice lumber, probably costs a substantial amount of money. However, it appears to be one big long fence on the outside of another enclosed fence on the inside. Everyone on the emails within the Walterson group has noted that it is very odd. The Walterson Improvement Association trusts your judgment on this point, but they do not want to see them have to take the fence down, but they do want to know why they need two fences, one inside, one of the other. That's it. Planning department has no comment on this application. <coughs> Thank you. And Mr. Baumgartner, do we have uh, evidence of a permit being pulled here? I'm, I'm hearing that the fence is already up. I don't believe we do. Uh, let me just check real quick. Nope, the only indication of a permit is the one applied for along with this zoning appeal. Um, so if the board would approve this zoning appeal, that permit would then go through the system. There's no prior uh, permit issued for the construction of the fence. Okay, all right, Ms. Williams, would you um, explain to us why you need a six foot fence, number one, and number two, why you, you built a six foot fence without a permit? There is, I purchased a house almost nine years ago. There is not a six foot fence on my house going down the side of Val Vista, there's a regular size chain link, fence, chain link fence, and that's all I have. My enclo my yard is not enclosed in the back, nor is it enclosed where my carport is. So going down one side, they had a chain link fence, and I don't have an enclosed yard. Um, I've had items stolen off of my property. Someone has even come in where there's the chain link fence that's on Val Vista, there's a door that opens there. They've actually come into that on that side and stolen the sticker off of a car in my parking on my parking pad. Um, also, there is a one-way street. I'm on Frankfurt. You make a right on Bell Vista. There are not cars coming back out to Frankfurt to look to go either right or left on Frankfurt because Bell Vista is a one way in. So once you turn, come up Frankfurt, my house is on the corner, Bell Vista is that next street, you will be making a right into. I am not constructing the fence at the beginning of my yard. What I'm doing is there's a point where there's a bush on the front of my yard on the corner of Bell Vista and Frankfurt. Then there's a chain link fence. They'll stop the chain link fence and then construct a six foot fence down and then around the back to come up on the side where my neighbors is 
to stop in front of where the car put. This would allow individuals not to be able to access my yard, my front yard, and my carport from Vel Vista. It's a blind spot. It's not a wetless street. I'm on a corner unit. I am a female living alone. I've had a number of items stolen off of my property from individuals that just park on the side, and I've seen a gentleman even come into my yard. So that's what I want to stop the access of individuals being able to pull on Val Vista to just open that chain link fence and come into my yard. So it wouldn't be at the front, and it's not obstructing any cars from leaving out, because if you're leaving out of Val Vista, you're doing illegal. You're not doing, and I've seen cars come out of Bell Vista, but it's an illegal maneuver because Bell Vista is the one way going down to the right. So there's not any construction of a fence because it is very expensive. So that's why I want to go through the proper channels of getting the permit because I don't have the money to get it taken down. Okay, so the fence is not built then. No, there's an no. existing chain link fence and, and there. How high is that? Um, I guess whatever the standard two okay. foot fence is. Okay. Okay. Any questions from the board? What did the What did the neighborhood association letter say? I thought they cited a existing wooden fence. They did cite that existing wooden fence. Uh, it certainly may be incorrect. It I can, if I can, address. I'm sorry. But if I could turn on my phone and find an email. I actually, have it up here. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, that's all right. Um, I mean, I, uh, I have the property up on Google Earth, and we have the satellite images in the file. Um, as of this image capture, which was 2018. Uh, there's the chain link three and a half permitted by right fence in the side yard um, that the applicant had uh, testified to. There's no wooden fence or any other fence for that matter uh, on the property at all. And that's reflected not only here on the record, but also uh, in the file. Um, I think it just might be um, an, um, an incorrect address. Okay. Uh, Mr. Okay. Board member. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Nope. Great, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Next case is 2019-33-129 South Schroeder Street. Get everyone sworn in, Ms. Shrew, I believe you are sworn in, but you can be sworn in again if you'd like. <laughs> Raise your right hands, do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Great. Ms. Shrew, are you representing the Appellant? I am assisting them this afternoon. I've okay. been asked to. Yes. And we have this to expand Tavern 131 South Schroeder Street into 129 mm -hmm. South Schroeder Street's first mm -hmm. and second floors. Is that correct? That is correct. And do we have staff reports? Okay. Uh, basically, a point. There's a letter from an email from a Harpal Badwal signed by Sonia uh, dated. February 25th. I have concerns regarding the zoning appeal 2019-33. The rules state that the sign should be posted for 21 consecutive days for the public. I saw the sign up for approximately four days, and by the end of the fourth day, it was not in good condition. I am sending you photos of the day I saw the sign last on February 9th, and today there is no sign. The sign must have gotten bad from the weather. However, there was no attempt to replace it. It was also worded incorrectly as the address that was written on the sign stated 120 South Schroeder Street instead of 129 South Schroeder Street. No one in the community ever knows about this upcoming hearing. It is not following the rules posting for a sign to the public. And then we have several letters of support. Do you want to get to the letters of support? or talk over the sign. Well, let's get a little testimony on the sign first. Sure. Um, that is, name, please. Uh, my name is Michael Cavanaugh. Um, the letter is correct in that the, the bad weather uh, affected the sign. Uh, I tried to repair it that night, uh, but it was, uh, wasn't even worth it. Um, so I took it down uh, the next day, put it back up. Uh, subsequently, I had to make repairs to the sign over the last 21 days when we did have bad weather, when it was windy, had to retape it, uh, but I made sure that it was up. Uh, we also have 128 signatures on uh, a petition, uh, which is further proof that we did 
make it known that, that this hearing was happening and we wanted community involvement. Okay, so the sign wasn't down for any more than 20, it was, if you saw it down in a period, it was up in, within that 24 hour period back up? Yeah, and, and if it was down partially, it was, it was repaired within 24 hours. Okay. okay. Okay, I think I think we can move forward with with a proper posting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other staff reports? Yes. Now we have letters of support from John Bullock of the City Council, the BNR Railroad Museum, Baltimore Development Corporation, Southwest Partnership, of the Hollands Roundhouse Community Association, uh, some neighbors all in support, and as he had mentioned. Uh, a very lengthy petition in support of the request. Thank you. The Planning Department reviewed this application, noted that this property is within the Poppleton Urban Renewal Plan area, as well as the Hollands Roundhouse National Register Historic District. The Department recommends that if granted, approval of the application be subject to the conditions that the properties are consolidated prior to any physical alterations of the properties to join them and that all exterior alterations, additions, and signage are completed or placed in accordance with the standards contained in Appendix B, titled Non-Residential Property Rehabilitation of the Pop Poppleton Urban Renewal Plan. Thank you. Okay, and if we were to approve, are those conditions acceptable to your client? Yes, they are. Great. Tell us about what you want to do, and I'd like to hear uh, something on uh, the expansion of a non-conforming use. Okay. Right. Um, I mean, basically what we want to do is make our establishment more friendly to families. Uh, and people with physical disabilities. Um, right now, uh, we have a bar and uh, two high tops, uh, so we're not very family friendly. Um, or in the case of my mom who has rheumatoid arthritis, she doesn't want to sit up there, so we want to build a dining room to be able to serve guests uh, that can sit down at a normal table. Uh, we also want to provide an area for the community uh, and organizations to meet uh, so the upstairs is an event space, which we would happily offer uh, to those organizations that are trying to better uh, the neighborhood and the city. Um, so that's kind of uh, what we're trying to do. Okay. Yeah. Well, as the expansion is critical for the second floor because we need a second form of egress. So right now the only way to get to the second floor is up and down the safety stairs. So we would be providing a safe way of exiting the second floor through 129 from 131. Right. Or, uh, to further Laura's point, uh, we have the option to build an exterior stair staircase that the fire marshal would approve. Uh, this would create safety and security issues. Uh, so we would like to be able to consolidate the properties to make it an internal staircase to avoid those issues. Okay. okay. That's about it. Um, as far as the parking agreements, there's also been a lot of discussion within the community. We do have some other community members here this afternoon um, as, and as far as the events this uh, has been a, a very successful uh, tavern at this point and we would like to consolidate the um, the, the two properties because it's non-conforming and also the fact that um, they have been approached by a lot of different folks to uh, have other events there and have not been able to serve the community so there's been no negative um, situations um, and we just wanted to make sure that we could just do the consolidation well yeah, I guess so it, you know it sounds like a, a great project and the neighbors the neighbors are in favor of it um, the issue we're having is the code itself which mm -hmm. doesn't allow uh, an expansion of a non-conforming use so I need really need you to talk me through that I mean how, how do how does this board get around that um, we'd like to uh, basically say that these folks have come into the neighborhood and that this is something that because of transform Baltimore it needs to be revisited I think that this is you something know, we across don't have the legislative board. powers I know we have don't. executive powers I understand mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that we need to do is is to look at what is the practical difficulty here and the practical difficulty is not to c remain where we are right now with this tavern it does not serve the public it does not serve the B&O Museum folks who have requ have requested this tavern to be a restaurant tavern 
for the use of their patrons, to be able to walk across the street from an event with families and to serve the community um, becomes an issue if we leave it the way it is. We don't, we don't have the ability um, to serve the general public. And that's the biggest argument I think at this point that we can give you is that the consideration of this board is to look at, um, to keep a, a, an existing successful business here as opposed to someone who's been here for a very short time and, and obviously has done very well. So the non and we're not, again, we're, we're not debating the, the project. I guess right. the concern we have is we're bound by the Baltimore City Zoning Code, and the Baltimore, right. City's, Baltimore City Zoning Code doesn't allow us to approve an expansion of a non-conforming use. Right. And that's, that's the hurdle we have. I mean, has your clients tried the legislative uh, route um, for remedies? We have. And I just obviously just came into this uh, within the last 24 hours, so I have not had a chance to speak to uh, Councilman Bullock myself but it'd be something that I would consider. Um, so at this point, maybe the thing to do would be to take a postponement and see what we could do. We Please. certainly will, will agree to a postponement. Okay. Mr. Rue, or, or either of the applicants, if I, if, um, 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 a couple of questions, Mr. Sure. Chairman, if that's all right. Is the intention for the property to be a restaurant or to be a bar? I mean, a, a restaurant tavern. Okay, uh, so the zoning the code says right. you can't have both, both, right? You're right. either a restaurant you're or you're a tavern. You're okay, so if you stay a tavern, Expansion's almost impossible. Um, consolidated and it's under 131? We can't give you uh, we can't give you legal advice, um, okay. but you, you should answer. certainly pursue that with right. with Ms. Giroux. Um and, and that's going to be the sticking point here: is that right. definition? Is it a restaurant or is it a tavern? Right. Given the zoning district is a residential district, I'd like so to I just uh, I wanted to kind of clarify that for you all as to understand right. why there might be an impediment for that tavern use in that R8 residential district. If the desire was to create a neighborhood restaurant, mm -hmm. it, that might, the, the code might be more favorable to that, but again, we can't give you legal advice um, and you would have to pursue that elsewhere. Um, uh, but that's all. But you, you are taking a postponement, is that correct? I would like to take a postponement. Okay. Thank all right. you. 2019-33-129 South Schroeder Street is postponed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next case, 1019-35-2301 North Calvert Street. Hmm. Good afternoon. testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Thank you. Would you state your name for the record, please? Joseph Maimon. Okay. Lynette Jones. Okay. Mr. Maimon, we have this to use as four dwelling units, is that correct? Yes. Great. And do we have any staff reports? Yes. The Planning Department reviewed this application, noted that this is a request to increase the number of dwelling units in the property from three to four. The issue that the planning department saw as a concern was that the amount of lot area variance that would be required for approval was 48% according to planning department staff calculations, which the department considers somewhat excessive in relation to the lot area requirement. The department does note, of course, that the building itself is quite large. That said, the department recommends disapproval of the application unless the applicant provides information that demonstrates that the need for this large amount and proportion of lot area variance needed for approval is appropriate. Thank you. Okay. All right, so why don't you tell us about the project and address the comments from the planning department. Okay. If it's possible, should we speak? I'm sure. My accent is not very good. <laughs> okay, so currently they recently brought the property about four, four months ago, mm -hmm. um, and it was used as three <coughs> units in there. There is a fourth unit which already has meters, it already had a kitchen, because I guess at one point it was probably four units. Um, so yeah, they wanted to- uh, Electric meters? Yeah, it it's already has five, un five meters in the building. All right, so you've got a public service? You already have public service, okay. correct. So everything is already there for the unit, the building to have four units. Um, parking has been redistributed in the area, so there's plenty of parking around. They've changed the parking that's on 22nd Street to diagonal parking. So now you're actually able to get more cars there. 
Um, so parking shouldn't be an issue. There's actually an attached garage that's to the building as well that can be used as additional parking if needed. How many, well, you know, we, we don't count off street, we don't count exactly. street parking for off street parking. So what's, okay. what on pro premises parking do you have? There is two garages there. How many, well, how many cars? How many cars? It's, there are no cars on the premises itself. No, no, I mean, how many cars can you park on the premises? None? No, None. With, okay. uh, with the exception of the garage, maybe two. So you put two cars Correct. in the garage? Correct. Okay. Um, okay, maybe, and if I can add that, uh, uh, just to be maybe a new need, and uh, if we can, if we let it like that, I'm sure uh, the condition, we c it can be uh, keep in good condition with the time, if it uh, will be a storage uh, unit and uh, nothing, uh, I nothing inside. If we can make it a nice unit, because I think there is a, a high demand in this area for a nice unit, and we make a really nice unit uh, in another apartment, and all the neighborhood, the neighbor was really um, happy of uh, our work. And um, then uh, I would like to ask if it's possible to make a to make this work in the, yeah. in the Current, it's useless space it would be a 800 square foot storage facility that's not used for anything we can actually use it to be able to rent to people in the neighborhood we're near you know in Charles Village people are always looking for rental spaces do you have any history of the property to show that it was lawfully used as a four dwelling unit at any point in the past um, just we uh, there is a chimney in a chimney Chimney. chimney in the unit, then the, uh, in this unit, then... Uh, I'm sorry, what? A chimney. Fireplace. Oh, chimney. I'm chimney. Sorry. Uh, with a kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, then... Oh, I'm talking about something from Baltimore City. Ah. Okay. Uh, no, we don't have any information. Like I said, they just purchased it four months ago. Okay. So. Mr. Baumgartner, do we have anything? Um, we do not. Uh, th there's... Um, th like a lot of properties in this particular neighborhood. Uh, it's a very old neighborhood with very <laughs> old buildings. Um, the only permit history is for this present appeal and, uh, and the permit uh, that accompanied this appeal. There are some work permits that were issued in the mid-1990s. One was to reinstall three bathrooms and three kitchens, um, some electrical work. Um, there was a permit in 19, or I'm sorry, an application to use the premises for <coughs> three dwelling units as a multiple family building in 1995. Um, uh, there's no indication that permit was ever issued um, but they were requesting three um, in 1995, um, and that's um, that's all we have. There's not much of a of um, an official permit record for okay. this property. But to be at your testimony, as you have five electric meters in this property, how about gas meters? What's that? There's five gas meters. Yes. Mm -hmm. no, it shouldn't be five. It should be. No, four. Four. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Can I just uh, sure. show you the? And we, I believe we have this. Do you reside in the building? Sorry? Do you re No, I'm the property manager. He does not reside in the building. Okay. All right. Any questions from the board? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Twenty nine. 2019-36, 6309 Ivy Mount Road. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? Uh, raise your right hands, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. State your name, please. David Kavar. Mr. Kavar? Kavar? Yes. Uh, we have this to construct one story side and rear addition, correct? Yes. Any staff reports? Planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Okay. Tell us about your project. Uh, right now we are living in a, a three bedroom house, small living room and dining room and kitchen on the first floor. And we're looking to expand the living room and dining room to the side by eight feet to have more room for a growing family. Okay, and I see you're expanding pretty close to the property line on one side. Right, so uh, we have, we're going to have about four feet between the end of our structure to the property line. Okay. Leaving, an, uh, that way we'll be able to have a window and there won't be any fire hazards. 
how close is your neighbor to the property line? Um, I would assume it's about 12 feet based on my site plan. Okay. I do have a letter of support from my neighbor. Um, on what, the one who's going to be very close to? Yes. Okay. We actually did go Saturday night and take a measuring <coughs> tape and If you would like us to make that part of the record, we yep. will. This is the one that's directly next to the, the new structure, and then another right under it. He, uh, Mr. Weingott was with me for support, but he had to go. He had a business meeting, so he, okay. I told him to write. Okay. Great. Any questions from the board? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next case, 2019-38, 200 North Monroe Street. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'll let your opposition come up. Okay, let's get everyone who is going to provide testimony sworn in, please. Everybody raise your right hands, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yeah. Okay. Would you state your name for the record, please? Uh, Prabhupul Patel. I'm the engineer. Sorry. Okay. What's that? Prabhupul Patel. Spell your last name. How do you yes. spell the first name? Prabhupul. P-R-A-F-U-L. Mr. Sukhwinder Singh? Yes. Uh, Mr. Patel, are you going to be leading this charge? Yes, sir. Okay, so Mr. Patel, we have this to use. First floor is restaurant, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and his staff reports? Yes, planning department reviewed this application, noted that this property could qualify for the neighborhood commercial establishment classification under the zoning code, and has no objection to this application. Okay. Thank you. So tell us a little bit what you want to do here. Describe the property, describe the use. Right. I mean, existing use was like a grocery store, and I think it's been vacant for a couple of years, I think, you know. So my client, you know, I think purchased the property, and uh, he's going to put a, uh, a restaurant over there. Okay. And then the second floor is still going to be like a residential as it is. Okay. And what kind of restaurant? It's going to be pizza and a subs. Okay. What, what will it be? I'm sorry. Pizza. Gotcha. And what hours do you anticipate operation of this restaurant? Like eight to twelve night. Okay. Do like a breakfast in the morning. And is this? I'm, I'm looking at your drawings. I see you have tables. Is this primarily a, an, an eat-in restaurant, as yes. as opposed to a carryout? Yes. It's like a like a small cafe type, you know, uh, restaurant. So. Uh, this is not like a big big area, so you know, half of most of my half of the area is going to be the bathrooms and the kitchen and everything. You know, then on the front side it's going to be dining in. What percentage of your sales do you believe will be uh, eat in versus carry out? I think it's maybe like a fifty fifty probably. Fifty percent carry out. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard one like all that. All right, is there anything else you'd like to tell us? No, that's all. Okay. I'd like to hear from the opposition. What do you, what do you plan to you serve besides pizza? Like uh, burger stuff, fried chickens, fish. Your full menu. Yeah, like uh, pizza, burger, sub, tender, wings. Thank you. Okay. So we'll hear from the opposition now. I, I see there's a number of you, and we want to hear from each one of you, but we would ask uh, to keep the repetition, if there is any repetition at, at a minimum. Once we hear it once, we've heard it. So please. Um, my name is Mary Covington. Um, the reason I'm here, we do not need another carryout that's going to be open for those kind of hours. We're on the corner of Lexington and Monroe, and I'm sure that you're familiar 
with this area. We have enough traffic at these stores. And if it's going to be a restaurant open there, you're going to have weed smoking there, drinking there. It's, it's not a good thing for that particular corner. We have, we have a restaurant on Fed and Monroe. We have a corner store on Penrose. It's, we just don't need this in our area. We have enough trouble as it is, and it has quietened down a little bit. And to put a place like that on our corner, we're bringing stuff right back again. Do you mainly have problems with the hours? Or we the have traffic? problems with the hours and the type of business, actually. We don't need long-term carryouts, you know, where you, I mean, are you familiar with Lexington and Monroe? Mm -hmm. We don't need that. You know how it is in that area. Well, why don't you, for those of us who don't know. Oh, okay. Well, um, it's drug-infested area. I mean, uh, we have the, the, the young people with the marijuana along with the other stuff that they're selling. And for a restaurant, they gather there. Once they smoke the marijuana, then they're hungry. Mm -hmm. Then they, <laughs> then they want to eat, you know, and, and then you have a whole bunch of trash thrown all over the place. It's just, it's just too much. With regard to that particular location, I understand it's currently operating as a grocery it store? It was a grocery store. Well, is it doing anything now? Is the grocery store shut down? No. I think it's a vacant space right now. It, it's, it's vacant fine. right it's now. It's fine right now. It's vacant right now. After the store moved from there, it's been vacant since then. And what kind of issues, if any, did you have or did the neighborhood experience while the store was operating? The store was fine. The store was fine, but a carryout, we don't need to carry out there. When and did we the have store close? Well, look up, sir. Um, how long? About two years, that store? Uh, oh, that store you you have to, you, 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 we, they're not testifying. Oh, okay. I can't remember how long it's been. Because it's another store right around the corner. So when that one closed, we go right on Penrose and Monroe to the store. Was the store also a deli? The sign says deli. Well, they sell sandwiches in the back and coffee. Okay. But not, you know, 24-7, not pizzas and, you know, things like that. It was just like cold sandwiches and coffee. Mr. Patel, what sort of um, security uh, do you anticipate have security measures, devices, people do you in envision having with this uh, pr proposed operation? I mean, it's going to be like a dining restaurant. It's not like a just carry out only, you know. Well, what sort of security do you anticipate? Do you have cameras? Yeah, it's going to have cameras, yes. And lights? Yes. W well, tell me about it. W okay. What are you going to do? I mean, yeah, we're going to have a camera probably on in and out both sides, you know, and monitor, you know, because that's how, you know, the we do the business actually, you know. I mean, okay. Uh, Mr. Patel, will that camera be linked to the Baltimore uh, Police Department system? Uh, I don't know yet right now, but yes, we can. Do you have other stores, um, other grocery operations, um, uh, um, and our restaurants in, in Baltimore? No. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Lavinia Queer, and I'm here because I'm a homeowner, and um. Our family been in that neighborhood for over 50 years. My grandmother was there. We have a store on every corner. If you go around a corner to Monroe and Fed, there's a store on every corner. There's a sub shop on one corner. There's a grocery store directly across the street from each other. Our block is a quiet block. We don't have that trouble now, it's gone. We don't want it back. We don't need it. We, we have enough stores. We have enough lunch rooms. They've already started to do work without a permit. They build a deck. They've done work inside of the store with no permit. There's been a sign put up, a work stop order has been put up. So they're already coming into the neighborhood wrong. They're doing things without a permit already, so what's to say what else they're gonna do? We don't need this. We have a lot of old people in our neighborhood that would like to sit on their fronts without getting in contact, you know? And like she said, they're gonna eat, they're gonna wanna smoke, they're gonna eat, they're gonna wanna plug their phones up in the store, they're gonna do all of that. The owner that had it prior to that, he didn't allow any of that. We felt safe with him. Now he's gone, he has a store around the corner, that's where we go. 
we have one, two, three, four, <coughs> four stores in like a block. You go a block this way, it's a liquor store. You go a block that way, it's a liquor store. We don't need, we, we just don't need no more. Hey, Ma'am, can I ask you a question? You indicated that we don't have those problems anymore and we don't want them back. Where were the problems coming from? The problems were coming from Fed and Monroe. They ran them from Fed and Monroe. They ran them, ran them up to Lexington and Monroe. They did not come. They did not bother the store owner prior because he wouldn't allow it. They tried, but he didn't allow it, and we didn't allow it, and we're not going to allow it now. But you're saying you're not going to allow it because you don't want the business to be there. We don't want anything there. We don't need any. We don't need anything there. We have enough of everything. Is it your preference that it remain vacant? Yeah. Not or be a laundry mat. Be something useful. There's a lot of older people that can't go up and down their basement steps no more to wash their clothes. Make it a laundry mat. We don't need no more fried chicken. We don't need. We, we don't need pizza. We got a sub shop on the corner where they hang, where every time they open it up, people get shot. It's been open two weeks. It's been two shootings already. And that's right around the corner. You know what it's like to see your grandchild hear shot and duck on the floor? You know what that's like? They have to watch your children do that? It's not a pretty sight. They're scared to go outside and play. You can't sit outside without getting a contact. Seriously, it's, 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 we, we don't, we have, right now, we have a quiet block. We have a maintained block, and we would like to keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you. George? Um, the lady mentioned that you've done work without a permit. No, actually, uh, when she I proposed the deck, she mentioned interior work. She mentioned yeah, the only I think they just started like a deck without permit, actually, you know, and it's been stopped. But there is no interior it's work. Stopped because the city stopped you, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, you don't. You no, no. I was not aware about that, but I mentioned. You don't know that, that you need a permit to do work. No, no, no. When I make a, like a uh, the application for the hearing, you know, I told him that you know we're gonna have the stair from outside, you know. So he thought, I mean, we're gonna build the deck, you know. That's why he started, but then I was not aware about anything about that. You don't know that you need a permit to do work? No, no, I, I do actually, yes, I do. He doesn't know that you need a permit to do no, work? No, no, he, he's the property owner, I'm the engineer. Were you involved in the building of the deck? No. Okay. Sir, you're aware, correct? That yeah, this is my first time, I don't know if you get it or not. You don't know that you have to do property, I get it. Okay, next. Yeah. You can bend that mic down if you'd like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, my name is Claudette Leach, and I live in the 1900 block of Lexington Street. I've been there for 68 years. I came there when I was about three years old. And can I ask a question? Who's the owner of the store? You can ask that question. Who's, you're going to be the owner? Yes. Okay. You're going to be there by yourself? No, Other people, okay. Well, I'm here to complain about not having them come on Lexington Street with another carryout. We have enough carryouts there. We have tr uh, traffic with drugs, all kinds of drugs, and the area is getting a little better now. And if they open up this carryout there, we may as well be doomed. We can't sit outside. We won't be able to walk to a decent store because they'll be on the corner selling drugs, using drugs, drinking, throwing bottles and trash everywhere. And this is not what we want in our community again. We've cleaned it up a little bit and the area is, you can walk around now, but if they put this carry out there, no. We won't, we won't, we won't be, we'll have to call 911, 311 for them to come out. And I, I don't want to continue to do that. I'm a senior, I'm retired, and I want to have a little peace where I live at. Mm -hmm. And right now, it is a little peace, but as I said, if they bring the carry out there, it, we won't have any, any freedom to do anything. And 
if you can agree with us on this, it would be well appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Hello, my name is Antoinette Brown, and I'm just going to say that it's just going to be a nuisance. That's all, you know, all it's going to be. It's going to be a nuisance, and that's all I got to say. Thank you. My name is Danelle Pratt, and I've been living, I'm a homeowner for almost 40 years, and we have seniors on the block like myself, and I don't think that it would be appropriate to have another carry out on the corner because of the drugs, the you know, um, you have some family with kids and the drugs come up on the corners and stuff. And most, some of these corners, not all, but some of these corner stores allow it because of the money. They spend money. And we shouldn't have to answer to that because they're getting rich and we are getting killed. <laughs> so. Um, we would appreciate if y'all would take that into consideration. And if it's long hours, 24 to 7, that's not appropriate at all because if you got late hours in the morning, that's giving them somewhere to hang out. And they're going to be on that corner 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, getting high, smoking them stinking blunts, and Next thing you know, you're going to hear gunshots. And it just, not that we wouldn't welcome you all, because. Me and, know, me and Monte continue oh. to testify. So. <laughs> you know, we're not, we're not trying to, you know, keep, you know, keep you down and out. But it is what it is. So, you know, we will appreciate that if y'all take us into consideration, because we do have home, home owners a block with nothing but homeowners, and we're trying to keep the neighborhood up. Wherever we see trash, we call in for it to be clean, try to keep our alleys clean, call in for rats. So I told to call the city one time and ask, um, is it appropriate for me to go around, just drive around, and not just around the corner, but the entire neighborhood, and see what needs to be done and call it back in so the city can take care of it. So she told me, yeah, it was okay. So I'm thinking about doing that. So that way it could help. Because I know sometimes the city can't get it all too much, too big. So, you know, if we take care of our neighborhood, our neighborhood will take care of us. Thank you. Amen. Hello, my name is Cecilia Stokes, and I was um, a concerned citizen and homeowner. But my um, complaint is also, um, if they're going to have this establishment there, I think the hours go just too long. You have kids in the, and they have kids in the neighborhood. The timing is wrong. I don't th believe it should be from 8 to 12 or whatever. The other establishments that pizza, maybe a couple of blocks over on, Warwick and Franklin, they're from 9 to, no, they come in, they start at 10 to 9. I don't see no hanging around because they don't approve of it. It is an eat-in restaurant. I mean, they have sections for you to eat in, but it's not dirty. They keep it clean, but there's not any residential area. It's not a residential area. It's bank mainly, well, they just placed that um, new apartment building there. That's the only established residential area that's around, meaning close to the it's, um, to the establishment. So that's my concern, the, the hours. And when I drive around and see what the other, the, the owners are allowing the people to stand around and do that. If they don't allow it, it won't happen. But they allow it. They let them come in and sit and mingle in there, restaurants or liquor stores, spending money and paying money, but that's my grout. My, my concern is the hour, the, the hours, and we don't want it there. I'm just picking back. I don't want to say what everyone else has said, but that's what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Carolyn Claiborne, um, and I actually live right next door at 202 Monroe. Um, when I first moved in the house, the store, the deli was open, and there were people outside talking half the night. There was food trash all over the corner and people sitting on my steps. And I had to call 311 so many times I thought they were gonna put me on a list. Mm -hmm. And I've also had needed to call 911. Um, a lot of people pulling up, the traffic, the noise, the music, the smoking. Um, I had to call an ambulance for a guy that was high um, in front of my house taking off his clothes. Now, the owners of the store moved a block down the street, and it's not the same because they put cameras outside. They have um, video monitoring. And that corner stays quieter and cleaner than it was when they were next door to me. And um, also, I feel like the restaurant would attract rats. Do you, so. do you accept that uh, a good owner that maintains good policies and has good security uh, would not be a detriment to the community, like the store owner who moved down the street? Well, yes and no, because I think what would happen would not even be their fault. It's what I see around a lot of stores, the people that want to come and hang around, asking people for change, asking people for cigarettes, smoking weed, um, and I've seen people that you can visually know that they own something stronger than weed. So your, your point is that it's inevitable that... Yeah, I, I, it wouldn't be their fault. It's just the neighborhood, it's just the culture. Thank you. And thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Mr. Singh and Mr. Patel, we, uh, as we started these proceedings, as we typically do, we called um, uh, and we gave the cases that have opposition an opportunity for the opposition and the appellants to talk, to, to try to walk, work through some of their differences. You, uh, you were, were not here when we called that, so you didn't have that opportunity. I, I'd like to give you the opportunity uh, to postpone this case. Uh, we can't, certainly can't make you and we won't make you, uh, but I would give you the opportunity uh, to postpone this case to talk to the neighbors and to see if you can work something out. It may be security, it may be cameras, it may be some sort of written memorandum uh, that gives the neighbors some comfort. Um, none, of, none of that um, is, is something we're forcing upon you, uh, but if you would like that opportunity, we would certainly give you that opportunity. So you'd like to postpone? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, there was uh, one member of the community that wanted to add um, um, an additional quick comment. We, we ma'am, we typically don't do that. I don't want to start a precedent where we have uh, people getting multiple turns at the mic because we just have to control this. All right, thank you. So 2019-38-200 North Monroe Street is postponed. Uh, 2019 39 4122 St. Thomas Avenue. Good afternoon. Get in touch with each other because the appellant just walked off. Well, I think we're going to leave that up to the appellant. All right. Good. Let's get you sworn in. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony which you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Great. State your name, please. Thomas Donovan. Mr. Donovan, we have this to construct storage yard into side yard. Is that correct? Uh, storage shed? We have storage building. Building, okay. Okay. Do we have any staff reports? Planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Okay. okay. Tell us a little bit about your building slash shed. Yeah, but, but there for 33 years, had a um, metal shed there when I moved in on the side. It's since rusted away, and I basically want to replace it 
with the, um, another shed, a wood shed, within uh, the regulations of the size in the, in the same general area. So is, is the <coughs> shed that you're replacing the same size as the old shed? It's, it, it'd be a little bit bigger. I don't understand uh, about eight by 10, something like that. How big was the old one? Uh, seven by seven. Mr. Chairman uh, and members of the board, uh, the reason why this is before the board is that the location of the shed is in the required interior side yard. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just for your information. If you were to move the proposed shed in a little bit, you could get a permit tomorrow. Um, but because of the, the, the position of that shed in the side yard, it requires a side yard variance. So that's, that's why um, you are before the board today. Does that make sense? Okay, I already had a shed there. One on this side, sure. and it's been 33 years it's been there. Sure, so it's that if, if the zoning code was the same at the time that that original shed was there, um, they would have received a variance from that, start, the, the, from that side yard requirement. Uh, the zoning code at that time may have been different. It may have just simply allowed that shed there. The, the, but the, the current code says that um, what you're requesting is something that the board could approve. I'm just saying that um, if you were to move that shed, you wouldn't have had to go on through this particular process. Well, moving a, a shed that's rusted, though. Mm -hmm. But sure. as soon as I start trying to move, it fell apart. So. Gotcha. Fair it, enough. It, it rusted away. I, I want to make the neighborhood look a little bit decent. That's all. all. Right. Okay. Can <coughs> you um, relocate the shed that you want to put on the property, the new one? Is there any place else um, that it can go? Plan. Yeah, we, we have this. Okay. And he, here, here's what it looks like. When it was there, I think we messed. Okay. Do you want us to make this part of the record? Oh, sure. <laughs> that so I guess. And, and the fact that I can't put it in my backyard because I parked my car there, and I also need need it parked there because of the crime. And one more. Because of the crime, and and need to park that car there, and it just recently had a grill stolen off my property. I need a place to safely store my lawnmower, my bicycle, my gasoline, and my car parts and stuff like that. And like I say, I can show you where my car got broken into. I had to replace. Okay, so, no. we understand. So, the, basically, the crime, I want a, a shed that locks in the same general area on the side of my house, well from the front of my house, close to the back of my house. And I do, do not have space in the rear because that's where I park my car. And even, even that, it's, it's on, on um, another level, too close to the alley. Yeah. Mr. Baumgartner, what's the required side yard in this zoning? 10 feet, I believe. And, and I, I think that's what he was trying to say to you. If you if that were moved so you were 10 feet from the property line, you wouldn't even need to be asking us the question. If you built a new one 10 feet from the property line, you wouldn't need to be here. But we'll, we'll let you, you know, we're not suggesting you change your appeal, but that's just the reality. Uh, yeah, that's still, I think I heard that. I, I would still like it within like maybe four foot of the sideline because, you know, my neighbor, you know, their house is pretty far away from the sideline as it is. And plus, an, um, it wouldn't be, be a nuisance. Okay. Any questions from the board? No. No. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next case, 2019 40, 3226 Bel Air Road. Good afternoon. One more coming. Oh. There he is. Uh, do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I Great. Do. Could you state your name for the record, please? David Hathaway. Mr. Hathaway, we have this to use portion of first floor as <laughs> educational facility. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Any staff reports? Uh, yes. First, we have a letter from the Bel Air Edison Neighborhood Incorporated. Uh, they write that they oppose the request. 
that their vision is to build a commercial corridor that helps the Bel Air Edison community and also appeals to the almost 30,000 cars that drive up and down their main street, which is Blair Road. We have, con have consistent issues with businesses that only see our corridor as an inexpensive opportunity to use for a commercial space for their own personalized, specialized uses. Uh, our goal is, as an organization is to have businesses on our corridor that do the proper market research, have strong business plans, and are willing to see the vision of a more prosperous corridor so that we can build a more attractive and prosperous community. After speaking with David Hathaway and receiving the business owner's contact information, the association reached out to this particular business owner and scheduled a time to meet for further discussion of their vision. The business owner never showed. It is disconcerting that a business has been functioning for some time without proper zoning and without proper permits. We also have a letter from Harbell, Mr. Uh, oh my God, Hilliard's here. Uh, their letter primarily supplies a copy of the violation notice for operating without a permit. Who was the first letter from? Bel Air Edison. Thanks. Planning Department reviewed this application noted that the original application, which is what we saw, was to use a portion of the premises to teach phlebotomy. That was the terminology that was used, um, i.e. for instruction of nurses with office use as well. The determination of the zoning administrator was that that was a type of educational facility classified as commercial vocational, which is a prohibited use in the C1 zoning district. The issue, therefore, turns basically on whether the board finds, based upon what the applicant provides as additional information, whether this would qualify as an educational facility, commercial vocational, or whether it would be some other type of educational facility, such as secondary, um, which is a conditional use, or post-secondary, I apologize, which is a conditional use in the C1 district. So. The department is not really taking a position directly on this one, but is making it clear that there needs to be additional information provided to allow the board to determine exactly where within the zoning code this property's use should be classified. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hathaway. Thank you. Thank you guys for uh, allowing me to present today. Um, like he, he stated, so it's a C1 business district. Um, does allow for educational facilities, post-secondary, um, and I'll just uh, the definition for post-secondary is zoning uh, from zoning is institution or institution for higher learning gives examples like college with degrees um, I have a letter that I just wanted to pass out to you guys um, from sorry I didn't this is my first time in front of a board I didn't know how many people are going to be okay. speaking to so um, so the, this letter is from MHEC, which is Maryland Higher uh, Education Commission. Uh, it's got Larry Hogan, the governor's, uh, not signature, but his name on the top. Um, <coughs> and then it, uh, it allows that, uh, that her business provides phlebotomy training and allied, uh, to allied health professionals who already have allied health training and experience. Um, and it recognizes uh, a phlebotomy as a program or, uh, or institutional operation, and I highlighted it, uh, where it, it says that. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to go over like similarities of higher education, post-secondary to phlebotomy. Um, so similarities are minimum education requirement, like high school. Um, this one you have to be an allied health professional um, it's people that want more education, so nobody's required to take phle phlebotomy, but nurses, doctors, uh, med techs uh, that are searching for more education um, and to better themselves um, can get the cert just like you're getting a degree. Um, and uh, it's for bettering people's careers, so if they want to raise their income level, for instance, and move up the uh, um, traditional uh, career ladder, if you will, 
Um, and it's a little bit different than vocational because vocational, you're actually training for something. So if you're an auto tech, you're training to be an auto tech. This is higher education, post-secondary. Um, that's different than a vocational, commercial vocational school. It's not, you're not just training. Uh, it's, again, it's higher education. How's it different now? Uh, like if, if you're going to uh, HVAC school, you're training to just work on HVAC. But um, the different fields like nurses, doctors, med techs, they all can go and take higher education. It's basically a post-secondary to different, you know, if you want to better yourself or get additional skills, unlike a vocational school where you're training for a specific thing to be, hey, I'm going to an auto mechanic vocational school to be an auto mechanic. Um, this is for a, a, a wide variety of professions, so it helps anybody that is, you know, would help people that are at senior living facilities that, that need to do learn phlebotomy to to draw blood. Um, does that, that answer your question? Um, sure. It, it's not it's not it's not specifically for a one job. It can be for anybody can take the training. So a vocational, I feel like it's more you're taking the vocation for a single career where this is multiple careers can come as a kind of a post-secondary higher learning. That's, that's where I'm, I'm relating it back to um, uh, the, the education post-secondary. So it's, and, uh, and there, there is a pre-requirement. It's not, you can't just be, can't just be me or you and, and go over and, and take the, uh, the phlebotomy course. You have to be an allied health professional. Um, does this school or program lead to any kind of a certification? It does. State or otherwise? Um, what kind of certification would that be? Uh, I believe it's phlebotomy certification. You're okay. just, it's for intravenous blood drawing. And that's regulated by the state of Maryland? Correct. And that certification would be required if someone wanted to go to work at a hospital or other facility like that? It's not necessarily required, but if people want to advance, if, uh, you know, you want a different skill set, you're like, oh, I, you know, I work at the hospital as triage, but I actually want to do blood drawing as well. Um, it's a, again, I, I go back to it's, it's a higher learn, it's an added skill. Um, okay. Um, and then, so uh, the tenant is a member of the community, um, uh, of that local Benny community. I, I was unaware uh, that we, I guess she. I guess maybe she set up a meeting with with uh, with the tenant. Uh, I was I was unaware that that Benny was set up a meeting or unaware that they were disappointed that she was operating or or do, wanting to do phlebotomy. Who are you uh, referencing? Uh, I would assume the letter that was read for our Bel Air Edison neighborhood incorporated. I do I do know a contact over there, but <coughs> she didn't expressed to me her, her displeasures of, of uh, she did, early on she did say that she thought that that would bring drug addicts. Uh, I said, hey, dude, don't you think that's bringing drug addicts? And I was like, this really has nothing to do with drug use. It has to do with training medical professionals. So uh, so maybe it's she was misunderstood of, of, of what the educational purpose was. Um, I, I feel like, but again, I, I don't, I don't know when that was written or or, or what context because I was not reached out to. Um, Is the business currently operating? So she was operating. Um, she she is a new business owner. Okay. Um, and you're the property owner, correct? And I'm the property owner, correct. Um. Um. And was she operating with a? Appropriate permits? So she was not. She was not operating with appropriate permits. I was. You didn't know she needed permits. I was not. I'm newer to. You didn't know she needed permits. I, she was newer. So as soon as as soon as we got the citation, we filed for this zoning hearing. Um, and kind of a follow up to that, if this program can lead to a certification to the state, 
does an instructor have to be certified in order to provide the training? Yes, she is certified. And is she currently certified through the, through, through the state of Maryland? So she was operating a business without a permit, but she was properly licensed through the state of Maryland to provide that type of training. Is correct. that correct? Correct. Okay. So it's it's slightly confusing <laughs> looking at that, if that's what you're re referencing. Yeah, I, 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 was, I, was, I was having a hard time. I was trying to figure this out. That's why. I was having a hard time as well. Um, uh, and again, to summarize, you know, I do do believe that uh, phlebotomy it not it adds value to the community. It allows people to raise their salary. So I do think it's a great benefit um, uh, for the for the community, especially the uh, the Bel Air Edison business district, which is a transient commercial district, and they do need good businesses. Um, she is local. She's grown up over in that area, so she has ties in the community. Um, she's a she's a good person, and she is. She is a she. She's a strong operator. Or does what you know? If you ask her, hey, you need a you need to file. It looks like we need to file permits here. Um, she goes through the proper channels. So um, I don't think there was any malice there. Um, and again, I, I do think it qualifies under the uh, <coughs> the education post secondary because it's not anybody can take it like like a CPR. You have to be a certified professional with experience. Um, and I do think it, it adds just gross amounts of value to the community and to the just having another good business district. There is a lot of vacants on that Bel Air Edison business district. If you, if you, you look and it, and it is a struggle as a as a business owner. Um, so I own two of the buildings and each consist of two commercial units, and it's a really hard struggle to find good operators. Um, that that uh, that have experience. Uh, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a gross struggle for me. So finding her, she she, she is actually w one of my best, and I, you know, um, so uh, I, I do think it meets the the uh, again. I did summarize. I do think it does meet the the post secondary education um, standard that is allowed for the C one district, and, and I would appreciate uh, <coughs> if you guys would consider it as as uh, to be zoned that way. Thank you, Mr. Hilliard. No, just to reinforce what Mr. Cunningham, Commissioner Cunningham already noted that uh, they were operating without a use and occupancy permit and were deciding for that in December 19th of 2018. And to clarify, um, Bel Air Edison Neighborhood Incorporated indicates they reached out to Mr. Hathaway who in turn gave them the operator's contact information and the operator has failed to meet with them. We do encourage meeting with the community associations. And yes, that's why I connected them too, but yep. apparently. Anything, any other questions from the board? Would you be willing to meet with the community association? I actually work with, <coughs> can I answer? Sure. Um, so I actually, I actually work really well with the community association, so I'm a little, I'm actually a little bit uh, struck to, to hear that letter and slightly disappointed. I'm actually in, in works in one of the buildings um, to bring Cups Coffee House, which is off of North Broadway, their second location to that community to be an anchor for, for the community. So, and that is, I'm, I'm basically renting it to Cups Coffee House for free as philanthropy because I think it will boost the business district. Um, and it's like, it's my only only philanthropy for my business because I'm really, I'm, I'm not big, but I, I if you guys, know of Holly, the owner of Cups Coffee House, which is a nonprofit that provides um, uh, at-risk youth with jobs. She's an amazing person. <laughs> and, and again, I, I, I have a very high, high vision for, for the community. I am not trying to, I want the best for, for that. I want, I want to be standing across the street to go, wow, this is, this is a pretty great business district. So I'm a I little bit. I actually would your tenant be willing to meet with the folks in the community who have the concerns? Oh, I, I, have, I have no idea. I'll definitely reach out to her to say, hey, you know, did you guys set up a meet? Again, I have, I have, I don't have. Is there a reason she didn't come today with you? Uh, she thought it was my responsibility because the citation was to me. Um, so she, she was definitely frustrated because <laughs> um, she, she didn't quite understand. Again, she's, she's newer um, as I am a newer commercial <coughs> owner. So... 
Um, I just said to you that I'll just go and pass along the documents. I that's fine. I, I guess it's my responsibility since the Would citations you be to, to me. Set up a meeting with your tenant and the neighborhood representatives. Yeah, as as the note said, I, I actually connected them via email, um, and I don't know if this is from if the the emails from Christina um, and. I know Christina and Will, who are who are members over there, and I've free, you know, I have their cell phone numbers. I talk to them free, I, you know, I work alongside them, so I'll definitely discuss about like, hey, I didn't know you guys are frustrated. I wish you would have reached out to me, so it didn't get to this point, and, and we could have talked about it. And, um, but uh, Chairman, I, I personally would like to hear the results of any meeting before I'm willing to make a decision on this. Do we want to postpone until we have that meeting? I so I prefer, so. I, I will definitely set up that meeting, but I but I do think that it, it meets the C1 post-secondary requirement. So I, I do ask, uh, I was the last name on the docket today, so this, yeah, I, I do have a relatively busy schedule, as do you guys. Um, we have issues here with the permitting, et cetera. I think we would all feel more comfortable making a decision after a meeting. I'm, I'm likewise, would love to see that happen. Well, you're free to proceed and yeah. take a decision. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, that's okay. We can we can postpone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys okay. for your consideration. 19 40 3226 Bel Air Road is postponed. And I believe that concludes our docket, and we are off the record. <laughs>